Welcome to Bike World, welcome to Southern Spain, welcome to the launch of the ginormous, gigantic BMW R1300 GS Adventure. That is the full title. Now when I saw this bike in pictures, I was a little unsure, but when I see it in the flesh, I actually like it. The only problem I'm possibly going to be have is it's a little bit big. But the guys at Bike World thought it'd be amusing to send the smallest member of the team to ride the biggest bike. And this is kind of going to be a two-part test, almost three-part. Because here in Spain, we've got two days of riding. We've got on-road and off-road, and I'm going to ride it sensibly, normal-ish, let's say. And then in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to give it to our long-haired, hippie, stunt-riding, crazy man, Chris, who's going to try and break it in Wales. So at the end of this film, we'll have a review of a sensible, mature rider riding it in Spain. And at the end of Chris's review, we'll see it snapped in two pieces. So, time to get kitted up, ready to ride the big GS. So, in terms of power and torque, same as the 1300 GS that I rode last year. I think it was this time actually last year. Um, but everything else, so we've got more ride height, we've got more travel on suspension. Uh, the electronic suspension is standard, you can't have it without the, you can't have it with conventional suspension. So we've got a big ride to do today, to be fair. BMW really laid it on, so we've got a lot of miles to do today. Uh, overnight hotel, load of miles tomorrow. i got two different bikes that I can ride. So essentially, I've got this bike, which is the trophy bike, which is my bike for the day. So I've got some spare water bottles and a few little bits kicking about. And everything is in... Um, English because I'm with uh, Austrian and German group and then that bike over there is the auto bike so they've got no clutch so I'm going to try that after lunch so I'm going to start off on this bike let's get the big thing off its side stand ah, that is not as intimidating as I thought it would be. Oh. So Chris is going to smash this bike to pieces in wheels and I'm just kind of doing what normal people would do. If they would... Woohoo! Lighting it up and having fun. If, if normal people take a £22,000 bike off road, I don't know. Some do. Whoa, big rocks there, mate. Uh, Enduro Pro, I've got traction on and it's just lovely because you can just light it up and slide it. Like you notice the weight, it's not an Enduro bike by any bloody stretch of the imagination. But it shouldn't be this good. Oh, that's a joke. I mean, that was a big. What? A big, big pole that we just went through then, and the suspension just took it like it wasn't even there. Just off road to on road to off road to on road. But that's what the GS is about, I guess. That is so easy. <laughs> you get quite a lot of banging and clattering from all the protection. But aside from that, the suspension is so good. Yeah, the brakes are really good. How... Oh, it's a bit of rope. How BMW have got a bike to perform this well? Oh, we're not. Like Off-road is quite... That is just remarkable. It's flattering the rider, like, I am not this good off-road. Trust me, Chris will confirm this. Yeah, a small round of applause needed for BMW there. It's weird, you feel really at ease with it. And you're like, wow, that's amazing off-road. 
and then you come to a junction and I can barely touch the floor <laughs> and I feel like some kind of balancing swan or something it's like crazy like lovely, forgiving nice and easy and then tippy toe can't touch the floor and lots of fun some of these roads are like where the trees have gone in them not high speed bumps but like low speed undulations and uh, you really feel the difference between the dynamic setup and the conventional road setup when you're in dynamic it's it's still reasonably comfortable but in, in road it's kind of just in these roads it's just a bit too wallowing to be honest third gear nice we just stopped for lunch done yeah a long ride this morning because we started off in town then we headed off onto some off-road did a lot of gravel trails really kind of started ripping it a bit in places and then just had some fun we haven't stopped till lunch till two o'clock so yeah it's been a fairly long ride and we've still got about another three hours to go but let me show you the bike and give you a bit of a run through so prices start from 18870 but as you can obviously tell it's quite easy to spec the bike up to probably 20 21 22 000 pounds depending on what you're going to do with a bike i would suggest most bikes coming out of dealerships are going to be 21 to 22 000 pound mark the engine is exactly the same as what we had on the r1300 gs so it's still 1300 cc still obviously a boxer 143.5 horsepower at 7750 rpm and 110 foot pounds of torque at 6500 rpm and that's exactly the same power and torque as the standard gs but obviously now we're carrying a little bit more timber and a little bit more weight that main weight comes from that tank which is now 30 litres which gives us a quoted range of 380 miles we've got the uh, DSA dynamic suspension adjustment that is on the GS Adventure you cannot have conventional suspension all the suspension is DSA obviously BMW ABS Pro front and rear which is uh, cornering 19 inch front with a 17 inch rear seat height ranges from 870 to 890 standard but there are multiple options of seat height and changes that you can make to the bike including a system where the when you come to a standstill the bike will basically take the preload out of the shock it lowers the seat below i think it's 20 kilometers an hour which makes it easier for short riders like me to get feet on the ground quoted weight is 169 kilograms so she is a big girl there is no mistake in that we've done a full morning mainly off-road which has been really good fun and shown how good the bike is off-road because i didn't think a bike that weighs 270 kilograms with a 30 litre tank would be that good off-road now as we may have explained earlier this is a bit of a two-parter because i'm going to do the launch here in malaga two days of riding then Chris is going to try and smash the bike in two when he gets to ride it in Wales in a couple of weeks time. Now it's a big ask for BMW to launch this motorcycle. It's usually important to BMW and due to that BMW laid on two days of us testing. So we rode all the way down to the Spanish coast uh, right at the very southern tip so we could see Africa off road on road and really put the bike through its paces. Now sometimes when we get to ride these bikes it's just like a little taste but this has been a proper thorough test of the big adventure Whew, that's a big drop so should we get away with the kind of elephant in the room and that's the physical looks and size of the thing and yes the guys at bike world sent me being the shortest rider to ride one of the biggest bikes so 30 litre fuel tank means essentially 30 kilograms pretty high up in the chassis 870 mil on the seat height means it's pretty high up as well but it's not as imposing and as daunting as you might think even for a short rider like me sure it's physically a big bike and you're kind of always reminded by that every time you look down and even though it's not very scientific when you pull big fat wheelies you have to actually stand up because i can't see down the right or the left hand side of the bike but it's not as intimidating and not as big as you might imagine it is 
heavier than the standard GS, obviously, but you weigh both bikes fully fueled, so it's not a true real representation. And if you compare it to the old 1250 GS Adventure, I think it's only one or two kilograms heavier. Yeah, the seat height is 870, but that can easily be lowered. I've left it on its standard seat with the rally seat on for the entire two days and jumped between models. And if you go for the uh, active suspension, which lowers the suspension by 30 mil, it drops down to 850, if I remember rightly. And that at 850, I could almost get two feet on the ground. So don't think it's as big and as intimidating as it first may appear. In terms of looks, that's down to personal style. Personally, I think it looks awesome. And I love the fact that BMW have done something a little bit different. If you look at the adventure market, they kind of like all look a little bit the same. You know, they've all kind of got a similar silhouette and a similar kind of look, but this looks very different. This is a GS. No matter where you put this bike, everybody knows you're on a big GS adventure. In terms of how it rides and now in terms of how it performs, it kind of depends on the boxes you've ticked. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is there's so many options, it's difficult to decide on mm -hmm. which way the bike goes. So one way, you can have something that's amazing at touring. You can have a comfort seat, you can have semi-active suspension, you can have adaptive cruise control, you can have as many rider aids as you so desire, you can have big boxes, big panniers. BMW are quoting a range of 360 to 370 miles per 30 litre of tank of fuel. So you can really throw out some big miles in perfect safety with adaptive cruise control and all those rider aids. Or alternatively, you can go for more off-road bias Carew tires. You can get rid of all the adaptive radar. You can go for a manual gearbox rather than the auto gearbox. It all depends on which way you want to ride. And that's what kind of makes this bike unique and it makes it quite difficult to sum up because I actually preferred riding the bike off-road, which was really good. I didn't think it would be this good off-road. It's going to be interesting when Chris rides it off-road because he's considerably better than me, more talented, and he's going to go big and really smash it. But I rode it like a normal person would ride it off-road on dusty trails, and the weight really depletes. You don't feel as big and as heavy as it does. Even like second, third gear, bit of clutch, and it'll nice little wheelie, it finds grip. It's not too intimidating. The Enduro Plus off-road mode is phenomenal. You can get a slide going, it rescues the slide, and it comes back. It's almost like... Riding with an off-road instructor is a pillion, giving you all this guidance. And then on the road, it handles way better than its physical size suggests. Some of that does come down to how much fuel you've got in the tank, because if it's got 30 litres of fuel, you've essentially got 30 kilograms quite high up, which is essentially quite a large dog sat on your lap as you're trying to corner. So you feel that when you're trying to throw the bike and throw it into corners. You're asking a lot of the tires and you're asking a lot of the brakes. It's the same brakes as the 1300 GS. And when you brake really heavy, and you're really pushing, then you kind of realize that you're pushing more weight than you was doing on the 1300 GS. Prices start in the UK, I think just under 19,000 pounds. Easily start ticking those boxes and you'll see it to 21, 22. I can see lots of people easily getting carried away and that price of 21, 22 is more realistic because that's the price of the bikes we've been testing here in Spain. But it's going to be down to that individual customer, what they want. Some people are going to like the automatic gearbox, which you can't argue is really smooth, effortless and dead easy. And it's very strange to ride around with no clutch. Start it with the brake on, put it in first, pull away, no clutch. Ooh. So I'm in manual, so now M1 means I could change gear it's not doing it for me. And then I've got D and M here. So if I press D. That means it's doing it for me. So I can stop in D, no clutch. Accelerate in D. Off we go. Automatically to second, automatically to third, and away we go. Personally, I still prefer the gearbox. I like that engine braking when I'm off-road and I just like to play with a clutch to play with a few wheelies. So it all depends on how and where you want to ride. But a phenomenal bike, very different from the 1300 GS. It's almost a completely different bike altogether. The biggest and hardest problem people are going to have is what box to tick on the accessories? Which way are you going to go? Are you going to go big tour, aggressive off-road? That's going to be the big decision. 
So that's it from Malaga. It's a big thumbs up for me on the big GS. Nowhere near as intimidating as I thought it would be. Now it's over to Chris in Wales to smash it.